This is like next level humiliating women. Like not only is it unbelievably disturbing that they get this a grown man, well he's a child, a 13 year old in a man's body to date this woman. But I didn't realize until last night when I went back and watched this thing, how much they humiliate this woman. It's even crazier before I get into the movie. This was originally like more of a horror movie. It was supposed to star Robert De Niro. <laughs> it was only scheduling conflicts is why we got Tom Cruise. But the actress said De Niro's version of this kid, this adult child, was more moody. And it was a little more of a horror movie of this like moody, teenager wandering the streets of New York. And Tom Hanks brought so much fun and light to it. Now when you see what I'm about to show you, I cannot imagine this being any more offensive to women, especially corporate women, like a successful woman like her. But imagine what I'm about to show you, but him also being a moody prick. Like, she falls for him because you know what? Like, women need men even if they're 13 years old. It's so funny because this whole thing is through the eyes of a teenager. We definitely do not side with the woman very much. And a woman directed this. So you will never convince me that women cannot make just as disturbing stuff as men. <laughs> this is Penny Marshall too. I'm like, what, Penny? We start off opening credits. These two kids, this is going to be Josh, Tom Hanks. He's talking to this kid. And this guy, this kid is giving him advice on how to like schmegsley harass women and like look down their shirts without their consent i know that they're teenagers but this is like this has been so normalized but it's like yeah of course that's what they're teaching each other the whole thing starts because this kid really wants this girl so he sees her out at a fair one night and goes up to her he starts lying he's like have you ridden this before and he's like yeah you here alone yeah aren't those your parents uh, yeah the inciting incident for this whole movie is he wants this girl. She's with this significantly older dude who derives because he's not big enough. He's caught in another lie that he clearly hasn't done this ride. Now he hates himself and everything they accuse us of is projection. I'm not kidding. This whole story came from that. So this woman will be used to make Josh feel good about himself. Humiliating this woman will make him feel like a big boy. Makes a wish in this Zoltar machine. Wakes up the next day in his child bedroom as an adult. Just gets stabbed by his mom. And he's like, hey mom. She rightfully so thinks he's been kidnapped by this man. Takes a bus to New York City with his BFF, Billy. Fails forward like um, a white man. Literally picks out a job from the paper. Next thing we know, they're applying for the job. Like putting his paper out as part of his job. Making up a social security number with the wrong number of numbers. Interviews with this dude out the name of his high school assumes it's his college like men do it's like oh i know that's good i'm telling you this is why fraternities exist so this man can hire a little literal child doesn't even know how many numbers his social security has this is the first impression we get of susan shoulder pads corporate one of the only women at this level in the office and what is she like she hates women especially her assistant who's engaged. All she talks about is her, like all the women in this movie suck, okay? Except maybe the mom. Also is like, well, I don't know where to put her. Fire the barge. So when can you start? Like, I will say the thing I do like about this movie is it shows that n the adult men are actually no worse than this 13 year old child. This boss just hired this major position. What kind of manager is this? Even though, like, the men in this story aren't that great, I do think it's kind of making fun of adulthood. The fact that they even put a love interest in this story is unbelievably disturbing. And the fact that they all they do is humiliate this woman, y'all, and all the women. So the co-worker, major schmegual harasser, not just that this guy talks crap about her, she actually lives up to the rumors. And, and not just her. Also find out Susan's a little schlut bag sleeping with one of her co-workers and that not the only one but more about that in a minute also have him look down her shirt by the way while she's picking up papers on the ground then they have this big dinner he shows up like a tiger trainer at the circus the boss and all the men are like what desperate susan's like yeah while she's hanging out with her little king baby she's eating food all weird she's like yeah probably that tongue action even when he's eating the corn like that the famous scene She's like, hmm. Of course she goes and approaches him. As 
those independent women are the ones who's supposed to make the first move and look desperate. Especially ones who sleep their way at the top like this lady. Like, you're so incessive. Like, no, what does that mean? And he eats some stuff that he thinks is gross and makes a scene. She's clearly embarrassed by him. Like, she's looking around to see if anyone's staring at them. I mean, and they are. Look at this. Can I have a milkshake or something? Desperate temptress is like, let's just get out of here. I got nothing better to do than cheat on my boyfriend who's also a co-worker with the new co-worker. Like, I just like things a little more intimate. This dude is like, wow, look at a car. A limo. And the driver is like, what is wrong with this guy? Because he keeps doing the locks while she is trying to hit on him. Like, you want some fries? And she's trying to be like, you know, it's really hard to date in the office. He's literally playing with everything in the car playing with the phone behind her and she's just like you know i'm basically saying i'm attracted to you he's playing with the radio she's like stop he's trying to be vulnerable he's playing with the sunroof he is visibly annoyed by this dude in this whole scene he's not listening to her again the driver is like what a freaking loser and yet she keeps hitting on him she keeps pouring her heart out to him slash hitting on him she's kind of doing two things at once she's like ejector seat literally starts doing this while she's talking like ugh. This woman is so desperate. She's beautiful, successful, smart, but she settles for this. Come on up here. It's like silly, but they did the same thing to Sandra Bullock in the proposal, y'all. I did a whole couple videos on that. That's exactly what they're doing here. Boss Birch needs to be humbled by a silly man who's way beneath her. This one is literally a child man. And then after all that, he's like, that's my apartment. She's like, really? I'd love to see it. She's like, I don't know if we should do this yet. I do what? They're like, spend the night. Like, sleep in here? Well, yeah. Okay, you get to be on top. Like, yeah. Like, what is wrong with you? This is where he lives. At no point am I convinced that she loves this man. She is nothing but annoyed by him. And again, it's kind of funny because the, the men who are not literal children are not much better than him. They're all the same. She doesn't deserve anything better than any of these dudes. But at least a child is nice to you since women are used to parenting men, why not? Why not this dynamic? You know, she gets in trouble for touching his toy. Doesn't want to play ping pong. Because women just don't know how to have fun. Doesn't want to jump on the trampoline. I get that he's supposed to bring out this childlike side of her. But again, just like Sandra Bullock in the proposal, we're supposed to not want to be like this woman until a literal child changes her for the better. He's going to help her up when she falls. He doesn't know how to have fun until he shows her. And this scene is so classic. Doesn't want to sleep with her. He wears his pajamas. He's all like, hey. And he's like, Burr! He's like, what the hell? Pick one. The dark passion ring. She don't get long. And she's like, oh, men treat me, my, me like crap anyway. I guess this is better. So she goes to sleep being like, yeah, this is better. And she gets a ride from the dude she's dating. And he yells at her playing with the radio. Also beats up Ash uh, in public. Who's going to fix him? The mommy, the nurse, the purse. Susan, of course. Oh, you know, he only beat you up because he's scared of you. And she blows in his ear. And he's like, well, how come you're so nice? You don't know me, huh? <laughs> oh, I do. But nice. Women are supposed to be nice. Like, oh my god, I love him. Next day, she tells her boyfriend she's been cheating on. He's also her co-worker. Take all of his stuff out of her place. He's like, oh, it's just another link in the chain. Dirty whore. First it was Tom, then Hamden, then Golding, then me. Am I missing someone, you little slut? Not like that anymore. Did they not have made this lady earn this job? Do all the women in the office have to sleep their way up? Because that's what y'all make it seem like. What's so special about this guy? He's a grown-up. And Josh takes her on a roller coaster. And then, of course, you gotta humiliate her with a little mustard. So we can see she's really a human, not a cold work. So then they go dancing. She's like, I think about you all the time. It's crazy. In my car. In bed. Never been with a man I didn't have to hide from. He's like, I gotta tell you something. And instead of telling her he's a child, and this is illegal and disgusting, they end up in bed. She's like, oh my god, you want a light on so you can actually see my body? Now he's the big man. And when she tries to tell him that she wants to have more than an affair, he's like, what do you think about that? He's like, I don't know. And then literally throws papers at her. And then they do this. Can't have a single real conversation. But okay, she loves him. He stays at her house all the time. Hobo schedule. Plays games while she's sleeping. Realizes he misses his real mom, not his girlfriend mom. Tries to tell her that. She's like, oh my god, you're married. This is too good to be true. The fact that you there had to be something. What about all the other red flags, Susan? He doesn't listen to you. Is that nobody let me have. Like, who isn't 13 years old inside, okay? Anyway. He runs away to go be back with his family. She realizes she loves him. Asks his friend where to find him. He's like, who are you? He's like, my, I'm his girlfriend. She's like, oh my God. Y'all, like she knows he's a child. 
And she's running after him. Like, oh my god, I can't let him get away. And then when she finds him, she's like, why did you leave? You can't just walk away like that. And she's like, oh god, you've already done it. You've already reversed it. You're going to go back. As soon as she realized this man's a child, she should be like, <clears throat> no, she's like, you got your wish. I try to tell you. She's like, I guess I didn't hear you. <clears throat> like, you know, the only reason why I don't want to go back is because of you. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. And she's like, oh. And then she's like, by the way, so what are you, like, 15, 16? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm 13. And she just groans. How are you not throwing up? What? She's like, mm -hmm, okay. And then I love this line, though. This is, like, one of the only lines where I was like, yep. She's like, well, that explains it. You can't eat my kitty cat. You don't know what you're doing. She's like, I don't even know what that means. Like, maybe you should come with me. You can be an adult in a child's body, and I'll be a child in a child's body. <laughs> and she's like, no. And, and it's not for the reason that we would hope. And she's like, I've already been there. It was hard enough the first time. Can't go back. You know what I mean? And he's like, hmm? And she's like, no, you don't know what I mean. That's right. You are a child. I still like you. And then she's like, well, let me drive you home, okay? <laughs> like a soccer mom. And then, you know, like, you'll be fine make plans to maybe chat in 10 years you know she's like maybe you should hold on to my number because i'm that desperate <laughs> like susan you're on the list now i don't believe this i mean unless we're talking about bridget mccrum or you know the lady from that movie that just came out with natalie portman and whatever like this is not an, a believable reaction but women are just so desperate for a man, you know, it, it's okay. I'll wait 10 years for this little boy. Like, ugh, gross! So then, I mean, she straight up feels like a predator at this point. She's like, so, where do you live? Which one is it? And he's like, that one. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss not having a man to talk to about anything real. Who literally just throws napkins at me whenever I have a real conversation. And who sucks in bed. Now that we know he also sucks in bed, what are his redeeming qualities other than the fact that he called you nice and isn't as awful as the adult king baby you were with? Like, like you won't even remember me. Uh, I promise you, he will remember the grown adult he, sl he slept with. Which is so weird. Is this grape? Because it feels grapey on both their parts. Like, I know he's a child. So she's technically the predator, right? But, like, she didn't know that he was a child, and he didn't tell her he's a child, so that's kind of grapey. Like, this whole scenario is so messed up. You know, like, like, if that was just it, it'd be one thing, but it's the fact she still wants to be with him. That is so much, like, makes it all worse. Look at this. They almost kissed. And then she's like, oh, wait, you're a child. I guess I just kissed your forehead. For now. Come back at me in ten years, buddy. You've learned a thing or two about eating so she watches him walk away and he's like bye she whispers but the most meaningful relationship i've ever had changed me made me vulnerable made me not such a ruthless boss a bird sleeps her way to the top like all successful women and then he literally turns into a child his oversized suit <laughs> he's like dear god and he's like bye <laughs> she's like well he's pretty hot for that young 10 years. See you then, buddy. Like, what? I know that this was a long time ago. And Tom Hanks and all of them have even said, like, this movie would never get made. Now? Let's just put aside the whole, like, adult dating children, sleeping with children thing. Because we know men do that all the time. No consequence. Especially in the church. <laughs> anyway, um, it's the fact that, that that woman is so desperate. So desperate for a man and literally is just a stereotype of all the things that they've accused us of being. Do you see what I mean? A woman directed this and it was written by a man and a woman together. Okay, I am telling you, I grew up with this stuff. They have been trying to condition us. It's not just the 90s movies and early 2000s and, and this has been going on forever. As soon as women started getting money, right? And as soon as we could have bank accounts, and legally, you know, 
They're like, okay, how do we convince them to do everything and date down and humiliate themselves and accept the worst, like the lowest standard and just so that then they can do everything and we can still be in power. <laughs> oh, I know. Let's tell them that a literal child will treat them better than adult man. Ah! Let me know if you want a part two because I could say so much more about this.